You're on a debt-free journey aiming to pay off two. Free journey aiming to pay off Hey guys, it's Wendy Valencia. If you are new to my channel, make sure you click that big old red subscribe button down below. Please subscribe to my channel because I'm lonely. Please. Don't I look sad? Yeah, I, it's one of those days. Sometimes I get this question and I don't want people to feel bad about it because I totally get it. But I sound weird sometimes. And legitimately, some people don't notice. It, some people just don't notice, but others do. Because I've gotten comments in the past about it on my channel, I thought I addressed it. I actually did a video way back in the very, very beginning. I have spasmodic dysphonia and spasmodic torticollis. They are forms of dystonia. And if you don't know what dystonia is, if you imagine people that have like one arm curled up like this, that kind of walk funny, kind of like they're, they, they can't control a limb. That's what I have, but I only have it from about here to here. It's in my neck and it's in my vocal cords and it is super annoying. Let me, let's focus on my voice. Because I have spasmodic dysphonia in my voice, it forces it. I have a lot of trouble talking at times. Sometimes I don't have any trouble. Sometimes it is horrible. Sometimes I try and open my mouth and I can't get any words out. Other than that, it seems to be working well, but I don't know what my deal with. And I can actually physically have to feel myself like forcing the words out and seventy dollars so utilities are what they are and we're almost never over. if you notice i have a lot of jump cuts in my recording and a lot of that is me cutting out the awkwardness of spasmodic dysphonia and i'll have to just apologize for that because that is my voice that is what i have but i i don't want to have to torture you all spasmodic dysphonia in my voice is not painful it's complicated though when I get upset or nervous, it gets worse. You know, that that may be a goal, but our goal will be to pay for it with cash. When I have to project, like in speaking in a meeting where I, I don't have a microphone, it gets worse. It's embarrassing. I hate it, but it is my life and I have learned to deal with it. So you will also notice in some of the mannerisms with, with which I speak, I start sentences a lot with so, because so doesn't require me. It, I don't ever have problems with saying the word so. So once I start talking, it tends to like calm down a little, but as soon as I stop talking, getting the words out again in the very beginning, very difficult. So I start frequently with so. And I try and edit those out because there's a lot, a lot. It, so it was an easy word for me to say. Words that are difficult, oddly enough, my phone number is extremely difficult. I can say the area code fine, but when I start out the phone number, there are a couple of numbers that are extremely difficult for me to say. Two is one of them. For whatever reason, nobody ever understands me when I say my phone number and I say two. I can say two fine right now, but if I have to tell somebody my phone number and I say two, they're like, huh? Some words are far more difficult for me to get out than others. I'm embarrassed by it, but not to the point that I, I can't function. And we have not been back since. I feel like this, it is something I have to deal with in my everyday life. I have to give presentations to people. I have to do things that are very high profile. I have to be okay with speaking in public and I am. When it comes to speaking in public, I'm not nervous. But when I have to speak in public and maybe be on a microphone where I know that my my voice is gonna be amplified and it's gonna be easier to hear, it bugs me. And then the CMFG life insurance. I've had it since the first signs of it were when I was a kid and um, I had, my hands shake. See, look, let me see. I can't hold my hands still. 
See that? That it was the first sign of dystonia. Apparently, it is extremely common in people that have dystonia to have tremors. Well, I went to a doctor for my tremors when I was very young. I want to say between 8 and 12. I don't remember. I was asking my mother the other night. She didn't really remember. But I remember it vividly because my mother was very, very nervous about it because I think they thought I had the first stages of Parkinson's. My mother was very upset by it, but she was trying to make it okay for me. And so we were joking that I was going to the doctor about my shaking hands, you know, like... Hey, how you doing shaking hands? That kind of thing. So it turned into a big joke in my head. It probably was never a joke in my mother's head, but in my head, it was a huge joke. That is the first memory I have. So let's say I was 12. Okay. I don't remember how old I was. That was the first sign that I had this. And as I got a little bit older and a little bit older, I started to notice that, well, I never really noticed it. I just kind of accepted it, that my head would turn to the side. And it, you'll notice in a lot of my pictures, my face is not square on. And the reason is because my head, because of going untreated for so many years, the top of my spine and my skull no longer sit correctly. The bone has been worn down, so my natural position now is a little bit off. So there's nothing I can do about that. It is what it is, but my head around, I started looking at pictures and it started in high school. So my head started twisting to the side like this. So I remember in my twenties going to the hairdresser and having a hairdresser that used to like pull my hair back because I would turn my head when he was trying to give me a haircut and he would just grab my hair and pull it back, not in you know, a mean aggressive sort of way, just, just doing it to get it, get it back where it went. But immediately my head would go right back to the position it was in and come to find out it was this dystonia. So what is dystonia? Dystonia for the easiest way to explain it, it's a movement disorder. It is a disconnect between the brain and the muscles. And so your muscles are in a constant state of contraction. So imagine everybody has slept crooked and they get a crick in their neck. Well, that is what dystonia feels like identically, but I have it 24 seven. So because the muscles in my neck are in a constant state of contraction, if I wanted to turn my head, I can turn it, but immediately it will pop back into the position it was before because that contracted state is my natural position. So how do I deal with this? My vocal cords, I don't deal with it. I don't have anything to do with getting my vocal cords fixed because that involves them injecting my vocal cords with Botox or Dysport and paralyzing them. And there is a huge risk when you inject your vocal cords that you will impair your ability to breathe. And I'm not willing to die so I don't sound like a freak. <laughs> but I do get dice board injections from here all, all the way around here every few months. So it's, it's about two thirds of my neck. So those muscles on this whole side of my neck are completely paralyzed. So they are no longer in contraction they're just paralyzed. And so I end up holding up my head with only this much of my neck, with only the muscles on this side of my neck because these are paralyzed. And so it makes it difficult. When I go to the gym and I put my head down, let's say I'm doing some floor work. I don't know, let me try and show you. So if I'm down like this, I'm trying really hard to lift my neck up. So if I want to pick my head up, I actually have to push my head up or grab my hair and pull my own head up. And it's embarrassing, but it is what it is. So the only reason I wanted to do this video is I've gotten some questions lately about it. Um, and truthfully ask away. I don't mind answering questions about it. Just try not to make fun of me. <laughs> I'm a little sensitive about the voice one, but, but not super sensitive, not like not like the end of the world sensitive. I don't cry about it or anything. Hey guys, it's Wendy Valencia. And if you are new to my channel, make sure you click on my big laughing face down below. And what the heck? 
I don't even know what I'm doing today. I'm a big laughing pace. Pace? My pace? I'm a dork. So if you are new to my channel, make sure you click on my big laugh and face to subscribe and I will put up two videos so you can keep on watching. This video is my latest one and this one is one YouTube picked out just for you. So I'll see you in the next one. See ya!